welcome to Back at Art School. Uh, so today is Friday and it is the last day of a full week of school holiday workshops that I've just finished. We still have another week next week. And I just thought it'd be, I usually go out for a nice walk in the afternoons after I finish work. I am offering a lovely class, art class, which is going to be how to sketch and draw a tonal, do a draw, tonal drawing of the powerful owl. And I'd really love it if you um, would enjoy this class. And once you understand the basic shapes of how to draw a bird that you may see in nature, I've actually just walked past three um, kookaburras they were just sitting up and I also saw a bush turkey and also rainbow lorikeets. So any of these birds are very, um, apart from bush turkey, is very similar in shape um, and it's more just the details that makes them uh, the individual breed that they are and the colours of their feathers. But with this class that I um, will be showing after this uh, clip is of the powerful owl and it's a tonal drawing and you may just want to watch it because the process that I use is starting off with the mid-tones first um, after drawing the powerful owl basic shapes and refining the shape of the owl you then go into um, creating the lovely tones of the feathers and you build this up with layers so the first layer of when you're shading, start off with like a mid-tone and then you also go into the darker tones and or leaving the light tones um, last um, or as a white paper. But if you just see the process, I show how to draw your um, a, a tonal key, you create your own tonal key and, um, and just the process of shading, you'll see step by step um, what I do as far as shading a lovely tonal drawing of the powerful owl. So I do hope you enjoy this uh, and I um, hope you enjoy. I hope you will have nice weather for the rest of the week. It's, uh, it's been raining for last week, but um, I'm looking forward to next week. Um, apparently more rain, but that doesn't matter in our studio. It's been wonderful having our students. Uh, attend and painting these incredible artworks that they've been working on and I will showcase that in a later video. So until then I'm going to enjoy the rest of the walk around uh, Cremorne Point and enjoying uh, just being in nature uh, and yeah I do hope you enjoy this class. All right see you then thank you bye. Hello everyone and welcome to today's art class. We're looking at the Powerful Owl. Now the Powerful Owl is one of the largest owls uh, species in Australia. So we're going to be focusing with this art class in regards to what the Powerful Owl looks like. There are many varieties of owls and they look very similar, but the key aspects in regards to the Powerful Owl is it has very big eyes, big yellow eyes. It also has massive talons. The size of it is really big as well. It has the ability to eat possums um, and it actually consumes uh, its bones, the possum's bones and everything. So <laughs> we actually had a possum um, that was killed by a powerful owl and was eaten by a powerful owl in our backyard. So I've actually seen it uh, for real. Um, so with these drawings, we're going to try and look at these unique features of the powerful owl and, um, and also do a tonal drawing. I hope you enjoy. So today we're going to be doing a tonal drawing of the powerful owl. I've got some really nice heavyweight paper and I've also got a sharp pencil and a razor and that's all we're going to need. Now as for the powerful owl, I've sourced quite a few photographs that I've gotten from the internet and I'm actually going to be combining a couple of the photographs together to create this owl. Uh, the reason is I can't, um, I didn't really like any of the photos apart from maybe one of the portrait shots 
in this photo and then the body shot in this. So I'm going to be combining both of these photos together um, for the final art. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm doing the basic shapes as we always do. And the angle of the bird is actually standing um, at an angle, if you can see like that, which I've measured. And I'm going to start off with that as the center line. This is also going to work out the proportions of where I would like the bird to be. So you always sketch in the basic shape of the bird and then you sort of work out the body shape first and following that line at the angle, because it is going to be sitting on the side, I will then start to do my first egg shape that follows that. Okay, so we're lightly sketching this. Some of these lines will be rubbed out at the end. That's fine. Now, as I said, I'm going to be putting this head onto the bird. So it's going to be pretty much straight up. So that is what I'm aiming for as far as the center where the neck is. For the center line to be up here. Next, I'm going to look at the shape of the head. So the powerful owl has a really large body, but its head is quite small in proportion because the body is rather strong as it needs to um, be able to pick up possums for its prey. So it does have a strong body, which is much larger than its head. And the head is quite oval. It's not like a round head. Okay. Then I'm going to go down to the body and I've noticed that its legs, you will be standing on a branch. So I will start to look at how the legs would be positioned. And I usually just draw that as sticks. Um, and I'm looking at the angle of this one where his feet are quite close together at the bottom. So I'm looking at the angle, I'm drawing the thigh area. I'm also looking at the angle next to it. So it's pretty much the same angle coming down, but it does come together where the feet are. So I'm just having a look and just drawing sticks. That's all I do at this moment. You are just trying to work out the basic shapes, the size, composition, making sure that everything fits in the space that you're drawing in um, and that it all works. Then I've got also got the toes and the feet. So he's got talons and you can see the different angles. So I'm actually going to be measuring off that and looking at how it is with just lines. I don't do anything else. And I noticed that the foot behind is a little bit further up. So I'm already making an adjustment, which is fine. And I'll do that again. So it's at an angle, it is on a log. So I'll just draw in a log. It's coming across and maybe under here. And I'll try and work out this foot and how it's also on an angle where the ankle is. So it's coming at an angle, ankle, coming up, thigh, similar angle as the other one. And then it's got the toes that come out. Just sticks, see, I'm just doing lines. I'm just trying to figure everything out before I do any details. It's really important to do this because you don't want to get stuck doing all this detail. And then you have this beautiful wing or face or something like that and everything else doesn't fit. So this is why we just do the basic shapes. He also has a little bit of a wing that's sort of coming down a bit. His body's a bit higher up. And then we're looking at the eye area as well. So I'm looking at the eye line area. So I just go straight across. Then you sort of work out where the eyes will be. So first of all, I just want to make sure that everything else I'm really happy with before I start detailing up the eye or making a little bit more detailed. Toes, really big claws. These are really long. There's a bit of foreshortening with this one. Really long here. Coming to the side, coming around the back. And then he's got his hind legs and so forth. So his legs are coming up here. So I'm just really trying to flesh it out just to see that I've got everything in the right place proportionally. 
and the head portion is it going to be even on both sides I'm just measuring with my pencil just have a look yeah it'd be about there so you want to have the same similar sort of width and then the back of the head So for the first sketch of proportion, this is how far I've taken it, and I'm really happy with that. Now we're going to start to refine the powerful owl. So we've done, we've done the basic shapes, and it's now time just to sort of shape up around the areas. We're happy with there, where all the locations are for everything. And I work around the body of the owl. So I usually look at the edge areas of the bird and like referring to the photo, I'm going to just change a little bit some of the shape. I'll also get rid of this middle line so you can start taking away some of the sketch lines that you've already done. Maybe the wing as well where that would be located. So it's time to like start cleaning it up a little bit. Get really confident in regards to the shape that you want this bird to be. Um, and also you can start to look at the eyes as well. So one of the things I notice is you're going to try and measure out the distance of where the eyes are located. And I usually start off with the pupil. And when you've got this cross happening here, what happens is it helps you measure um, quite accurately where the location is for the eye. If I looked at the head in the photo, and I'm just trying to look at, if I look at the center line from the outside of his head to the middle of the beak, and I measured it in, I, the, it seems like the outer side of edge of his eye would be in that location. So I'm just working it through to there then I would say that the pupil would be about here. Um, I'll go lightly with this because I would like to also include some of the shine of the pupil later on when I start to do all the shading. And then once you've got the measurement where you think the location is for that eye, I actually measure from that pupil point, the middle of it. And I do a mark just there, and that's about the same place. Make sure it's the same size. And you can only see the differences if you just keep it as the pupil themselves. And I, as you saw, I grew out like from small to big slowly. So I noticed that the brow of the, um, if you're looking at this now, in line to the eye is just below. So I'm starting to look at maybe building the brow, how it goes around the face. And I work on both sides. Can you see how I'm always working from one side to the other? You are more likely to see any differences if you go slowly like this, going one side and to the other, rather than just focusing on one side. This coloring, this sort of going around. So I'll shape that up first. And I start to work on the eyelids. So he's got eyelids which come quite across. But then it goes down. Try not to do too many pencil marks. Otherwise you just get lost with these thick marks. So I've worked out the eyes. I haven't gone extremely dark with them yet with the pupil colors. I've actually rubbed out some of the areas here where I've shaped the areas where I can see the shine in the eyes. I'm gonna work that up later. At the moment, I'm still working quite mid-tone. So when I talk about mid-tones, I'm talking about when you're looking at the different tonal um, values. So to begin with, it's really good to have a grid. And what I usually do is I have one that represents white, 
Then you have your tones, which will be the, come the mid tone. That's a light mid tone, a little bit darker. And then you can go even darker. And then really dark. So these are sort of just showing you the variations with the tones that I'll be using. So it's always good to have a guide. I usually start off with working around these tones. And then at the very end, I start to then include like maybe the darker ones, okay? And then you also want to leave areas of white, such as shine of the eyes and so forth. Um, and it's maybe not even pure white when you're doing those. So it's really important to have this gauge set up before you start doing any tonal variation. But when you're sketching, try and stay in the mid-tones um, and then also keep all the light areas as well. I'm gonna do the beak. So he's got a white area on the top or it catches the light, the beak, and it comes down like a simple triangle. That area. And it's quite long and sharp and pointy. And then it sort of flares out a little bit on the sides. Just having a look. Okay, and I'm gonna start shaping up his head a little bit more. And I'm going to get rid of some of these center lines because we don't need it anymore. And start cleaning it up. So this is why you need quite a good quality paper because it can deal with uh, rubbing out a little bit and stain it. And keep it quite light around the edge still. Then we're going down the body. And then I'm going to go into the feet area. I'm going to sort of flesh out. It's got a lot of fluffy white hair. So you don't need to draw that in. You just need to sort of show where the top of the feet is. He's got these, if you look at this photo, he's got these feathers or this sort of go around his toes and we'll start to flesh out his toes. And his th toes are quite thick and I'm actually building them around the bones that I'd already drawn in. And you just need to look at the shapes and how it goes around those areas. And then once you've got that, and sometimes you won't seal the whole thing because it's wrapping around the branch. Come around to this other toe. Make sure you include any of the knobbly bits. You know, it's not a perfectly round toe. You might have the toenail. So all those sort of things you're, you're starting to look at. And I've got a bit of foreshortening. Foreshortening is uh, basically when you're looking at something. So if I was to look at my finger, looking straight up at you, the whole perspective of that is totally different to if it's on the side. So you need to adjust the way, the length, and trust what you see in the photo in regards to how long it is because there is a foreshortening that is happening. It doesn't make sense to look at it as what it is, but you have to trust that that's how it looks because, you know, it's just the perspective of that toenail that's coming towards me that makes it look really short and stumpy. But that's, um, if you made it long, it would look weird too. Happy with that. I'm happy with the shape. I'm rubbing out all the sticks for the center legs that I did at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Now I know we've got the position. I'm going to rub out the toes in regards to the bone structure that I had put in before. And yeah, I'm happy with the back of the bird. Might go a bit bigger. They've got the underneath, you got the wing. Coming back. And I think I am happy with that as far as refining. So now we're up to uh, adding in all of the tonal values and the shading. 
what I usually there is no rules in regards to how you do this. Uh, it's totally up to you how you'd like to work out your midtones and how you'd like to um, put in the patterns. But I'll show you what I usually do. Uh, first of all, I look at the shapes of the feathers and I look at the contrast. So you've got white areas of the bird and then you've also got these dark feather patterns. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to lightly sketch out those feather patterns first. Um, and then I will start to work them up. It's going to be a long process. So with this video, I will be sort of speeding through some areas, cutting out some areas because it'll be very repetitive. So it's not going to be like this massive video. So I'm going to get started. And I do this in mid-tone. So you, you can edge it around or you can just actually just go in there and start to shade it in. As you see, I can, I've already started using the mid-tones, these two tones, to sort of sketch out where the feathers are. And I'm just following a pattern that's on the photograph in regards to where they are. And I'll continue to do that. Another area that I would be looking at doing is you can start to sort of, you see how you've got these sort of fluffy areas where it's like quite large areas which are shaded in. I might actually start sort of adding in that sort of, tone as well and this gives shape to the body so you can just be working around and then you know really sort of fill in those areas where you can see the, the fluff of the feathers and go in the direction that you see as well so the direction is going a little bit up with this one where the center of his chest or between his legs are so I'm just going into that direction and it is a darker tone just slightly darker but you start to start forming the actual bird itself. And I may go back over these feathers and make some of them a little bit darker in the tone, but not yet. I'll just go all over and I'll start to just really shape out each of those um, feather patterns. And it is a long process. You need to like sort of take your time, take a break when you need to, don't get stressed out about you know, having to have it all done in one go. Um, it is a process and it just takes time. One other thing I'd like to uh, point out as well is when you're sketching, you want to sort of reduce the risk of smudging over the tonal work that you're already doing. So I usually keep a piece of paper under my wrist when I'm going over any of the areas that I've already done. It keeps your work clean and it's a really um, good way of just keeping everything really nice and polished. And then just the progression I just want to show you. So I've sort of come up and I've started to shade in these areas. I've started to work around the face. I'm just toning in that mid-tone areas um, and then also leaving the white spaces for the shapes of the feathers. It is a long process. As I said before, take a break whenever you need to have a break and then just keep on going. It's, you know, it shouldn't be a labor. It should be something that you're enjoying to do. Okay, so that's all of the mid-tones, and I'm now going to start going darker. So once you've got everything sort of laid out in regards to where you want to have all the feather textures and so forth, you then scan around and you start to include some of the darker tones. This is where you start to really refine um, what the um, owl looks like. Uh, for example, you really want to try and get the eyes to be really nice and shiny. So when you go into the dark areas, you go gradually. Really look into the eyes, really look at where there could be gray reflections. There could be like really deep, dark um, areas as well. So it's really good to try and get all those variations, especially in the eye.
So as I start to build up the darker tones, it's sort of brought everything together and it's a really important part. So once you've got your mid-tones all in, then you start to really note out all the dark areas that you want, especially around the claws and the toe areas. You can start also by doing some of the log area. And again, you're trying to build up the texture. So same technique, go mid-tone first, then you go really, really dark with it and don't forget to do the shadows around the foot.